Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rocketeer. 3D printing and rocketry, oh man, they go together just great. I have flown a lot of 3D printed flying things, I call them, flying machines, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I've also printed some smaller 3D printed rockets. But I thought the other day, wow, it'd be great if I had a 3D printed retro rocket. Well, I don't have the skills to draw one of those up, not yet. So I asked my friend Aiden if he would take a look at it and see what he'd come up with. I gave him a few guidelines, and this is what he came up with. Oh yeah, look at that. It's got a portal here and some nice shaped fins. Really cool looking. The big question is, it looks great like this, but will it fly? Let's take a look at this clip. Sky is clear. Let's launch in five, four, three, two, one. As you can see, it flies really well. That flight was on a Quest E35-5. This is a Quest F41. And the motors are similar. The Quest uh, F41 will get you off the pad just a little bit faster, uh, but very similar in performance. As you can see, you get nice flame, smoke, and some noise too, crackling that goes with it. It was a really great flight. It was a lot of fun. And the Quest motors are also a budget option over an Aerotech single-use motor or something like that. So for about $30 uh, at the date of this video, you can fly it twice. So that's a lot of bang for your buck, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. Okay, let's take a look at the construction. Let's start at the aft end of the rocket. It helps to have a motor casing to install in the motor uh, tube here. It's not absolutely necessary, but I'll show you why in just a minute. So what you're gonna wanna do is put some E6000, or whatever type of epoxy you wanna use. I like the E6000, it's easy to use, it's inexpensive. I use it in rocketry and around the house all the time. And I'll leave an affiliate link in the description and uh, you can purchase it there if you like. But I'll put a little bit of glue on the motor tube here and then I'll push it all the way in. And uh, then I'll install the fins and I'll just take this one out. There is a notch on the top of the fin and that will go even with the airframe. And uh, so what you want to do is be careful that you don't crush the uh, motor mount here when you assemble it. So you just want to make sure that it fits in there nice and snug, but that it doesn't put too much pressure on it because it could deform it and make it difficult to get the motor in. And that's why I suggested using the motor casing. You don't have to. You can use a even a spent black powder casing, 24 millimeter, uh, for this procedure. But um, as long as you're careful and don't crush the, the motor mount, uh, you'll be okay. So I glue all four fins in with the E6000. And then there's a flat plate here that the rail guide goes on. And make sure that fits down in there nice and snug. And then, oops, yeah, let's get it the right way. <clears throat> and then you want to glue that onto the airframe and that'll perform. Uh, give you plenty of uh, support for your uh, 3 16 rail, the maxi rail. Okay, once that's glued on there, then the next thing you'll want to do is glue the pods on. And the pods are for motor retention. I don't have the clip yet, but the Z clip will hold the motor in. And uh, I'll show you a picture of that later when they come in. But uh, this is a simple way to retain the motor and uh, it'll hold it in there just fine. So after you're done with that, then you want to stand the rocket up and uh, use the connector, which sometimes I call it a key, but it's a connector piece. And the connector fits inside of here and will join the two parts together. And the connector has a pass-through for a Kevlar cord. And so you just need a small knot on the back of that, and I would put some E6000 in here, and that will support that just fine. Trim any extra off, kind of tuck that in there, trim any extra off, and you're good to go with that. 
So once you get that mounted in there, there's also a pass through in this area here for the cord to go through. So we're gonna put the uh, connector in here. Push it down nice and tight. And as you can see, I have the Kevlar cord coming out and then you can connect the top section that has the same locking key set up. And that works really good. It's uh, easy to assemble like that and it's very robust. As you can see too, there's like uh, rivets on here too. You can paint those rivets if you like. I haven't gotten around to it, but uh, this is uh, burnt titanium PETG. And uh, PETG is just really durable, works great for this kind of thing. And uh, it will survive uh, the heat. The, uh, this paper tube, it's a BT-50, will help insulate the rocket against any high heat. So I haven't had any problems with that at all. And uh, the, the original one you get will go all the way, um, I think up into this area here a little bit farther. Okay, so once the connecting key is in there, then we can move on to the upper section, connect that, as I showed you before. And uh, you can see there where it connects. And the nose cone uh, comes off. And as you can see, there's a generous area to uh, fit the parachute in. So I use a uh, 18 to 22 inch parachute will work well for it. The nose cone has a bridge in the top of it. And that's where the Kevlar cord, you just tie that onto there and that'll provide support for that. So once the rocket's all together, uh, I'll come back and we'll take a look at it. The assembly went smoothly, but we want to check a couple things before we set the model aside. Make sure that the rod guide for the maxi rod guide is in the proper orientation so that the rod slides in just vertically when the model's sitting on the table or on the pad. Also check that the fins are nice and square on a flat surface. I didn't have any issues with mine, but the E6000 takes a while to set, so you have time to make some minor adjustments if you need to. And while you're at it, you might as well check the motor mount fit. Uh, if you have a motor available, just slide it in there and make sure it fits nice. Mine's nice and snug but fits in there easily. Uh, for other models I've had, I've had to uh, take the label and make a slit in it and peel a little bit of the label off if it fits a little snug. In my case, it fit just fine, but that is an option if you need it. Check the Aero Dragon website for availability. This model should be available soon as a kit. Also, we're gonna produce other models. If there's something that you would like to see, leave a note down there in the description. We'll take a look at it and see what we can do. Also, the Aero Dragon site has uh, some interesting projects that I think that you would enjoy, like an altimeter and some launches and other things like that, all uh, involving rocketry and electronics as well. Okay, that's it for today. I'm wishing you blue skies. Keep the pointy end up and the fire end down. I will see you soon.